What's going on YouTube? So it has been a while. There has been a lot going on over the last three months. It's arguably been uh, the, the busiest, the most stressful uh, last few months of my life. Um, a lot has happened. And so today I'm gonna talk about it and some of the lessons that I've learned throughout the process. But to give you guys uh, just an idea of what's been going on, the last three months I merged three of my insurance offices here in Las Vegas into one mega office and uh, while also expanding into Oregon. Uh, we purchased an agency, uh, we acquired a book of business in Oregon that allows us to now be able to do business in Oregon and Washington and it's been a lot, right? We, we merged three offices into one but we also took on another one in Oregon. But you know, now that the storm has kind of passed, uh, there's been a lot of lessons throughout this process um, and today that's what we're gonna talk about. So let's jump into it. This is one of the first YouTube videos that I've made um, since expanding um, in a big way. Like we have scaled so much in the last three months. It's honestly been the most challenging few months of my life. I've never been so out of my comfort zone with not just merging three offices into one, but with being offered the opportunity to acquire an agency in Oregon and to expand into a whole new state. And that alone, you know, was a lot of work, but to merge it, to mix that with my offices as well as just life in general and my wedding coming up in a few months, just, it's been a lot. And as you can imagine, uh, there were some lessons uh, in the process. And that's what I wanna share with you guys today. Uh, three things that, that I think have been instrumental in this massive scaling process of the last few months. And so if uh, this is your first time tuning in, a little bit about myself, my agency. I started um, my captive insurance agency in November of 2016. We scaled all the way up to about $5 million in premium. And then from there, we purchased uh, um, another $5 million agency, taking us to about uh, 10 million. And um, over the last few months, um, through just writing a, a lot of business and scaling and um, specializing my agency, uh, creating management positions and telemarketing positions and building out a real uh, organization, um, as well as this Oregon acquisition, we are uh, we should be finishing the year at about an eighteen million dollar agency, which it's just crazy because when I first started, my goal was to just write and grow a million dollars a year, and to think that we're gonna be a eighteen million dollar agency by the end of this year by year seven. Um, I just don't have the words for that. Um, you know, I'm a believer in God, so I give God all the credit. You know, I'm just super grateful for that. So uh, we're not done yet. I've got goals of continuing to scale, getting to a $30 million agency by 2027. I think I know we can conquer that. And throughout this, you know, then my agency isn't the only thing I want to grow. Like I want to grow my online presence. I want to build a stronger personal brand. Uh, I started a few other companies that, uh, and I'm also building, and you know, real estate portfolio. There's just so much that I want to do, and but my one thing's for sure: my insurance agency has been the foundation, the core to everything else. Like I've given this blood, sweat, tears, 100% energy for the last seven years, and slowly but surely, I get to expand and do so many other things, and so. So that's a little bit of background of what the last seven years have been. Um, I wanna share three lessons that I've learned just in the last three months. And as I sat here and kind of thought about it, uh, this is what they've been. So I remember uh, talking to my director of operations uh, who I promoted uh, at the very end of last year. I remember talking with him. Uh, we went to a conference and I remember saying, I, had, I hadn't decided on expanding into Oregon yet. And I told him, I said, hey, look, I need to make, you know, I, I need your buy-in. Like, I'm, like, I'm not gonna do this unless I have the buy-in of you and, you know, uh, my sales manager and my service manager. 
Like I want to make sure you guys are fully bought in because uh, the reward will be just unlimited um, if we pull this off right. And so when I make these decisions to scale, having the right team in place uh, is super important. And without the right team in place, you know, you, you're, there's going to be so much required of you. There's only so many hats you can wear when you build an agency of 20 plus employees. And that's exactly where we find ourselves. We have about 23 employees right now. And it's, um, it's, it's a lot of work. There's a lot that goes into it. The first lesson is delegating, is empowering your team as you scale. Um, now, I don't recommend delegating a lot until you're at least 5 million in premium. Uh, 10 million for me was where this really got, this became a sweet spot. Like the agency became so much more easier to run once I had the capital that a $10 million agency provides. I was able to pay my team more. I was able to hire more positions. I was able to spend more in marketing. I was able to build a real structure uh, to my agency that just made it so much better because I want to take care of my team. I want to reward loyalty. I want to reward hard work. And so delegating throughout this process, I've removed myself from a lot of the things that I did for the longest time. And so delegating um, hiring and onboarding and interviewing to my director of operations and my sales manager was instrumental to being able to expand into a different state. Um, I wouldn't be able to do it without them. So just trusting in your leaders, they're not gonna do it as good as maybe you can do it, but they're gonna do a damn good job. Uh, even if they can only do it at 80% or 70%, um, and it allows you to focus on the things that you wanna focus on, it's, uh, I mean, it's just, um, uh, it's just a good, feeling, a good place to be. The second lesson that I learned throughout this process was uh, in the midst of it, in the midst of all the chaos, there was so much going on, was to keep your cool. And for me, keeping my cool is has everything to do with taking care of me. And taking care of what taking care of me looks like is working out you know, exerting this energy, this built-in stress, like, like releasing it. Um, so never skipping workouts, um, taking care of myself. So like getting massages on a weekly basis. If you work out a lot, you need to take care of yourself and kind of give back to you. Um, you know, making sure I had my, my health habits, my, my reading habits, you know, meditating, praying and doing these things because when you scale, when you say yes, to a larger opportunity, it's going to come with so much work. Um, it's like, you know, like that saying where it's like, you know, an entrepreneur jumps off before building their wings and, and then they figure out a way to fly. It's the same thing. You know, when we said yes, I knew I had my hands full. I knew I had my work cut out for me with moving offices and, um, um, you know, just building out this framework and then not only that, but like the hiring, like I knew we needed to make like, like five more hires for the sales team. And when you're gonna hire, when you need to fill five sales positions, that means you need to hire like 15 to 20 to 25 people, <laughs> maybe even more because so many aren't even gonna pass their test. So many aren't going to, they're gonna quit, you know, within the f first few months, many are gonna get fired and so, you really do have to look for the diamonds in the roughs, um, still have your standards and expectations for who you're trying to bring into your office, do a crap ton of um, just efforts, like just like closing a sale and getting an insurance policy sold, you have to do the same thing for hiring. And so to fill, to build our team up to what it is right now, it took a lot of work, a lot of hiring. So I needed, you know, back to delegating, I needed my team for that. Um, just keep your cool. Just keep your cool throughout the process because there's gonna be a lot. You know, be careful what you pray for and you ask for because you know once once God gives it to you. I mean, when you're in that storm, you got to keep your cool, and and just uh, I just felt like this to do list was never getting shorter. Like I just had this never ending to do list, and it was so much. Um, but 
you know, everything is slowly working out and it's, you know, uh, slowly becoming smooth again. And that's the story of my life. Like literally how we, how do we get to 18 million in, um, in seven years? I just, I say yes, I create chaos in my life and then I spend the next several months making it smooth and making it flow. <laughs> and and then I, I flow and I flow and I flow and then I'm like, it's time to challenge myself again. And then I just go right back into challenge mode and chaos mode. And so in the midst of it, keep your cool, right? So that's the second lesson. And then the third one, they all kind of tie together, uh, which is this, which is uh, always be hiring. And we've all heard it. You know that you need to be hiring, but just never get comfortable with the team that you have in place. Um, you need to have standards and expectations for your team because many are not going to fit it. And the moment you realize that someone's not going to be a good fit, uh, whether that's performance related, whether that's uh, culture related, like you just got to cut them loose and just cut your losses quickly. And so, you know, slow to hire, quick to fire, um, but always be hiring, like always be marketing. Um, you know, I pay a hiring service. We use Team Hired. They've been amazing for sending candidates and filtering them through my way. Um, letting all my friends and family and social media know that we're hiring will send good people your way. Um, and, and that's been instrumental. Like as I look at my entire team, half of them have come from a hiring service. You know, I'm spending you know, over 2000 a month for a hiring service, but it's so invaluable because it does multiple things. It keeps your team hungry because they see that you're actively interviewing. You're looking for their potential replacement if they don't work out and then doing your own outreach. And so the people that people, your friends and family send you are usually decent people and that they may be a good fit. At least they'll be reliable, right? And then it's up to you to build them, uh, to train them and to, to make them, you know, a good fit as well. So, um, so always be hiring. So that way you're never in this lack of, uh, you know, um, scarcity mindset when it comes to staff. What we do, um, you know, it's, uh, there's so many levels to this, but what we do, we're going to need the right people always. And so never get comfortable with the team that you have in place. Um, so those are the three things that, uh, three lessons that I learned over this scaling process. Uh, I hope it's added some value to you and it helps you along your agency ownership journey or maybe you're an LSP or a, um, or a producer um, working for an agency and you aspire to be an agency owner someday. These are uh, some things that I've learned as we've uh, scaled into new levels. And so if you got some value, my ask is that you smash the like button, you share this video, follow me on my social media platforms, subscribe if you haven't yet. And uh, until next time, We'll get back into making content consistently. Uh, appreciate you. Peace.